In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is common occurrence in uh, East Africa, Kenya, and Tanzania, Uganda, as well as my, di my previous diocese, uh, Tuliar in southern Madagascar, that when a, a priest or a bishop or a layperson got up to speak, they would raise their right hand and say, Dirauni Tumbu, which means praise the Lord. And everyone else would raise their right hand and say, Amen. Dirauni Tumbu. Amen. Thank you. I feel right at home. <laughs> a little over 14 years ago, when the Lord called both Patsy and I to return back to Madagascar. And at the time, we were living in Kenya. And my responsibility as being consecrated as a bishop, serving as assistant bishop in southern Madagascar, was to start a new diocese. Now, let me just ask you a question. By a show of hands, how many of you have started a new diocese before? <laughs> exactly what I thought. Uh, and as well, I had no experience in starting a new diocese. But I did know how to grow the church. And I did know how to spend a lot of time on my hands and knees praying before the Lord and coming closer to him. And so when we finally became our new diocese four years later, because we were starting out, I mean seven years later, we were starting out with 11 churches and, and 300 people. After we had grown to a certain level seven years later, we officially became our new diocese. And so it was time for me then to call all of my clergy and all my evangelists and lay leaders and bring them all together. And so we were going to have time with strategic planning. And so we had set it apart to have this man come who had worked with the president of Madagascar to come and to share with us for three days. And I wasn't quite sure how this was all going to go. Because in the Malagasy culture, everyone likes to share and everyone likes to participate. And things just kind of keep going on and on and on and so on. And, and, and in this case, the, the first day, our objective was to, to work on the, the vision of the diocese. And I wasn't quite sure how this was going to come out, but at the end of first day and uh, praying and talking and discussing and negotiating and, and doing whatever we would do in terms of setting up a strategic plan, um, looking at the vision, we, we came up with, with a small phrase. And it was Mitumbu Mandrusu Awamni Christi. So that was to increase and multiply in Christ. And it was amazing that we came to that. All of a sudden, it clicked. But it took us, took us 8 to 10 hours, 12 hours, as we were kind of praying and eating and praying and eating, as lots of Episcopalians do. And we came to this, and it was so exciting. It was like we had, we had encountered God. People were going around giving high fives, and the Malagas said, we need to dance. We need to celebrate. And then it took a couple more days to look at a mission statement, and then it took another couple years to finish our strategic plan. But it was a time that unified us. It was a time where people felt like they had skin in the game. And it was amazing how it transformed as part of this strategic plan. It, it bound people together because there was a common cause to increase and multiple in Christ. Now, now when, I, when I think of that today and I think about the passage that we're looking at today from Mark chapter 16, beginning with verses 14 through 20, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, to his 11 disciples, and he's setting out the strategic plan. He's setting out what some people call the Great Commission. Now, some people say, wait, wait just a second. I, the Great Commission is only in Matthew. Well, I want to tell you, actually, it's in each one of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And each one of them has a, a little bit of a twist to it, a little bit of different focus, 
but they're all moving in the same direction. And in Mark, there's no exception. And so I, I want to read to you from Mark because this is something that's been carried on for the last 2,000 years as part of the Great Commission, the strategic plan of God. He says in verse 15, for those who did not understand the Malagasy, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Now that's from the NIV. And there's two phrases that I want to look at because I think these two phrases are important for us as a body of Christ, important to us here at St. Mary's as we move forward. And one phrase is to preach the good news to all creation. The other phrase is to go into all the world. I want to start with the second phrase in terms of the passage here. Preach the good news to all creation. This is in the NIV. Now, to preach the good news of all creation, I, I must confess that when I read that, oh, preach, preach, because in the Greek, that particular word is in the imperative form. So that's the command. That's the focus of this particular passage. But in the NIV, which I've just read, from you, read for you, actually doesn't, doesn't do justice to the understanding in the Greek. Because when I think of preach, I kind of, you know, I kind of shy away. Maybe we have a negative term regarding preach. He's a little bit too preachy, isn't he? I don't want to preach. I've seen these guys before. They just go on and on and on. But, but in the passage here, it, it's, it's, not, it's not focused necessarily on preach. I want, to, I want to give you another understanding because it's only, it's only in the New Testament that they begin to use this word preach, but it, it doesn't actually mean that necessarily. What it means is to, to announce, to, to proclaim, to declare. Now, when I think of announcing, oh, I could do that. I just, you know, just give me a piece of paper. <laughs> I'll just go up. Okay, I got it. I'll just announce something. It's, it's easier to announce things. And so, so this whole understanding is announcement. This whole understanding in the Gospel of Mark is about this model of royalty to, to announce Jesus Christ. I, I, I don't know about you, but, you know, announcing has different implications. In, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, rather, the empire would announce, you know, if there was a child that was born... You know, there's an announcement that takes place. And, and, and in the Advent, what are we doing? We're beginning to announce that Jesus Christ, a child is born. And in the empire, when, a, when, the, when the, the emperor had a son, it was announced. There was, a, there was a, a piece of paper that was sent out to all the Roman Empire, and it was announced a son is born. And I know in Madagascar, when I would have responsibilities in the Diocese of Tuliar, I would write a pastoral letter every three to six months to all the parishes and all the churches. And I knew that when I sent that out, I knew that they were going to announce it. They were going to read that because that was a letter to the par parishioners from me, a pastoral letter to encourage them in their faith. So, so announcing... And, and I think of my grandchild, Jabin. I have two now, Jabin and Eliah. But when Jabin was born, I, it just changed who I was. And even my wife said, you're much more happier now. <laughs> there, there was something about having a grandchild, and, and it's hard to explain until you come to that point where you do, and those who have will understand Something just changes within you. And I remember picking, uh, when 
Corby came and picked us up, our oldest daughter came and picked us up at the airport. Um, I wasn't expecting to see Jabin there because she didn't think it was going to work out, but he was there. And I said, I want to sit in the back right beside Jabin. And so I, he has these small little hands, and, and I just put my finger, and he clutched my my little finger, he clutched it with all of his hands. And, and I just stared at him for 45 minutes. Just at awe. Now, with that all said, I didn't have any problems announcing that I was a grandfather. I didn't have any problems sharing with people that I have this cute, adorable, he's the best grandchild in the world. <laughs> to people. Announcing. And so that, that's part of our responsibility is to, is to be able to, to announce. And, wh and what are we going to announce? And, and the rest of the passage, the good news, the good news of all creation. That, what are, so what's the good news? And I love Mark because once I said, I, I said he, he's, he's about royalty here and he likes to announce things. And what does he do right in the beginning of the book? I, I love it when someone tells me right up front what they want to talk about. And he announces it right in chapter 1, verse 1. What does he say? In the beginning of the gospel. Now let me... Just so that we understand, in the Greek, when it's referred to gospel, it's referred to good news, that's the same word. So it says, in the beginning of the good news about who? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Isn't that great? So the good news is about Jesus. So the announcement is about Jesus. Isn't that great that it's not about me? And it's not about you? But it's about somebody who's greater. Someone who has transformed the world and continues to transform the world and transforms lives such as you and I. And that's Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that I'm a living testimony of that. And so the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ. So, so what else? He says in verse 15 in chapter 1, the time has come, he says, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. So we're, we're called to a time of repentance. We're called to a time where we, we stop living our own lives for ourselves and start living for Jesus Christ. And that's no easy shift. And that's complicated and that's difficult because the, the world, there's so many pressures in the world and there's so many, there's, there's family issues and there's work issues and there's life issues that, that tend, to, tend to just pressure themselves on us. And, and Jesus wants to let you know that you're not alone. That he's there. And that he wants to be in this intimate relationship with you. And that we're told to repent, which means that it's not only a confession, but it's a turning away from and turning towards Jesus. And I loved it last week when Father Todd came up and he shared his heart. And he shared the, the transition and the idea that he is leaving St. Mary's. And I, and I know because that's something that I've gone through in the last year, leaving some, some place and some community that it was so passionate and so much loved and so much part of our lives. And he said there, he said, and, he, and I remember, he said, just come to Jesus. That we come closer to Jesus. Because when we come closer to Jesus, our lives begin to change, our perspective in life. And we can never get enough of Jesus. Because it's there that we go and we encounter him that, that, that things begin to shift and things begin to change in our own lives. Because he provides some things for us. And this is one of them. And, and Michael, Michael Green said this. He was a professor in New Testament, he's an evangelist and so on, and in his book, uh, 
evangelism in the early church, he said that, that people's understanding of the good news during that time was both political and military. And political, it was the announcement which I already made reference to earlier that a son would be born in the empire because if a son was born in the empire, there was hope that there would be change in the empire and that it would provide hope for the Jews. And then the second thing in terms of the military is that, that politically it was always considered good news when he went and won the war. It brought hope to the people, it brought victory, it brought peace for people because they had defeated the enemy. And Jesus, he brings hope into our lives. He gives us strength to overcome things. He gives us victory over the enemy. And so that is good news. That is, that is good news indeed, and it helps us to go forward. So that's, that's the first phrase. The second phrase is this, to go into all the world. It's interesting, as we go closer to God, as we go closer to Jesus, he brings us, he sends us out. Isn't it interesting? He sends us out. So we come closer. On Sundays, we come to church to worship together, to pray together. We come together. And then what happens? We're sent back into our communities. We're sent home. Isn't it interesting? Where's our home? In the community. That God sends us out into the world. And in and, 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 and Acts 1.8, we're told to go into Jerusalem, we'll go into our local community, Judah, kind of a regional area, Samaria is kind of the next region over, and then to the uttermost parts of the world, maybe even Madagascar. And I don't know if I want to do that. I'm not sure my parents want me to do that either. I know that my mother-in-law didn't want me to do that <laughs> with two grandchildren. But, but when you go closer to Jesus, it's interesting that the naysayers, if they come closer to Jesus, it's interesting that it has an impact in their lives. So the word here, to go, it's not a command. Where to announce is a command, but to go is not. In the Greek, actually, it means while you are going. So it was understood among the disciples that they had already gone out in chapter 3. They had already gone out in chapter 5. They had already gone out. This is part of their ministry. And Jesus was saying, while you go. So as global Christians... It is innate within us that we are to announce, we are to proclaim, we are to go. Jesus doesn't have to negotiate with us. That's part of who we are. And that can be quite frightening. But we have that opportunity to go and to, to proclaim the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died on the cross. Because you and I are the ones that should be up on the cross. But because he loved us so much that he substituted himself for us. And he loves us so much that his strategic plan, he calls us to be part of that. You and I. And we know that we, we don't have, you know, we have our own weaknesses. But isn't it great? Because John mentions, in our weakness, he is made strong. Because in our weakness, we have this tendency to begin to move closer, hopefully, to God. And we see him do incredible things to go. And, and today, today, we have the opportunity to, to get involved in going um, today we have the opportunity to sponsor people that are, that are going out in missions. Today we have the opportunity to continue to be global Christians. What would it look like here at St. Mary's? And I, I love this idea. What would it look like at St. Mary's if St. Mary's not only sent out short-term missionaries, but raised up 
someone from within St. Mary's and sent them out as long-term missionaries. What would that look like? Now, some of you might be thinking, yeah, I know who I want to send. <laughs> but I'm talking about God working through someone, raising them up and sending them out. You know, if we did that here at St. Mary's, I want to tell you that we would be the first church in this diocese presently, in the diocese of South, Southeast Florida, who would be doing it. And so that's exciting that we can be part of that. And it's exciting today because we can send out short-term missionaries as well. And as Father Christian said earlier in the other service, he mentioned, you know, he, we can send people to Ecuador, we can send people to Madagascar, we can send people throughout the world. What did John Wesley say? John Wesley, who's the greatest theologian, very missionary-minded guy, he said, the parish, the world is my parish. And I, I believe that the world is God's parish. And that we have an opportunity to be globally, global Christians in going out and spreading the good news. There are 7 billion people on earth. 7 billion. And about 3 to 4 billion are Christians. So that means that 3 or 4 billion are not. So there's a lot of work out there to be done. Where is God calling you to be involved? St. Mary's does an incredible job locally. And I praise God for that. But I want to challenge you to be involved in global missions, worldly. I think it's a great opportunity to expand God's kingdom and be part of that. And I believe that God's calling each and every one of us to be part of that. And today, today, we get the opportunity to commission the Garcias that God is calling them to go to Ecuador for a week. And I think that's awesome. But who's next? Who is God calling next to be part of the strategic plan? I'm, I'm going to go. I don't know where I'm going to go yet. I'm probably at the same place where some of you might be. I'm in transition. But I know that global missions is always going to be a significant part of that. God's calling you. Are you ready to be part of that as well? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We want to call up the Garcias at this point. He's ready to go. He's ready. <laughs> Sign him up. Let me get my mask on. So this is awesome. You, you represent all of us. And um, not all of us could fit in your, your luggage or your suitcase, but we're, we're going to be present with you as we, as we pray for you. Um, and it's Julia and George. George. Great. And so we're looking forward to it this, this time. And it's, a, it's an opportunity just to receive from what the Lord wants to do in, in another culture and to, and to give his grace and love to those and to the children in Ecuador. So let's pray. Okay. Um, but, but before we do, I, I have just a question first. <laughs> are, 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 are you guys ready to be, you know, uh, missionaries to serve Christ in, in Ecuador? Yeah. yeah. Great. And, and are you guys willing to share your love and encouragement to, to God's people in Ecuador? Great, great. Now let's pray. Let's do this. 
Heavenly Father and gracious Lord, we thank you for Julia and George. We thank you, Lord, that they've accepted this, uh, this call. Whether it be short-term or long-term, they've accepted it, Father, and we thank you for that. We thank you for their bravery. We thank you for going cross-cultural to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, to, to announce and encourage and to love. And I just pray for your traveling mercies upon them, Lord, as they go. I pray for them as a couple that you would you just unite them, that, that they would be able to have just an incredible time together as a couple and to read your word and to spend with the community and just see what you're doing already there. And I pray, Lord, that they would be a blessing to those in Ecuador, that they would be encouraged as well. And so, Father, we look forward to them going as well as returning to hear their stories and to hear their testimonies about your grace working in and through them. Bless them mightily, Father, as they go now. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.